Hello everyone, welcome back to another session of uh, the anti-Russia energy and food crisis headlines. So, uh, and uh, I forgot to I forgot to introduce myself. Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia, and uh, this is the DPA headlines for the anti-Russia energy and food crisis. So, um, it's been two weeks since I last covered uh, the the situations all around the world regarding uh, the energy and food crisis or rather the looming energy and food crisis because the the, the crisis had not uh, hit fully across uh, the entire world only some countries are suffering from it uh, most countries are panicking and are trying to do whatever they can to uh, make sure it doesn't hit them but uh, towards the end of the year we're going to see a lot of countries suffer so anyway let's start off with the iea so the international uh, energy agency has warned that the russians can cut gas supply to europe so this is by a uh, voice of america news so they say that the russians will use this as a leverage uh, against the west uh, and this uh, executive director fatih biro of the IEA uh, in the statement say that uh, consider considering uh, recent behaviors of the Russians, they say that uh, they are the Russians will definitely continue to find excuses to further reduce gas deliveries to Europe or even cut it off completely. So uh, he says that as a result, Europe needs to have a contingency plans. Uh, of course, I mean you the the West has been sanctioning uh, Russia, so of course the Russian will consider you know counter sanctions and uh this is causing a, a lot of uh chaos in germany so in germany on the 23rd of uh june they have raised the gas alert level to alarm so this is i think this is the second level uh so there's three levels so this is the second level and uh, the last level will means uh it's all hell break loose so gas prices surged after they raised the alert uh, highlighting the impact of the reduced flow in the region so they exited the early warning and uh, moved to the third and final phase of the emergency level so the robert habeck uh, the federal minister for economy and climate protection say that we must not fool ourselves the cut in gas supp uh, supplies is an economic attack on us by putin so uh so according to a statement to uh, by Reuters, say, if this minus becomes so big and that the companies uh, can't bear it anymore they and they fall down, the whole market threatens to fall down at some point. Uh, so some some broken English. And then so a Lehman, a Lehman Brothers uh, effect in the energy system. Uh, referring to the global crisis. So basically, uh, he's trying to say that uh, if this uh, gas cut is going to cause them so much trouble, the companies uh, will not be able to bear it and they will collapse, causing a whole market whole market collapse that will rival the 2008 uh, economic crisis. Uh, this is this my version of the English. I think is much better. This is some horrible English, and this is echoed you no know, by the economic minister. Uh, species himself, sorry, <laughs> the same person. He repeated again the next day, uh, talking about uh, how they are in the second uh, stage of the emergency gas plan, and uh, the natural, the European natural gas futures has go up by eighty five percent, year to year to year, and uh, so under this uh, second stage uh, emergency gas plan, utility companies can now. Uh, pass the price increase to the customer however they the government have not allowed this to happen just yet but uh the the minister say that this thing could kick in if the supply continues to you know be crunched and uh the price increase uh continues then they will be have no choice because the energy supplies that buy power on the wholesale market are going to run up losses and they could fail so so this is the, what he said uh, then this there's the exact statement about Lehman, and uh, a few days later, Uniper, the 
Europe biggest importer of Russian gas uh, said that uh, they only receive 40% of the contractual committed uh, gas the orders from gas Gazprom and uh, Uni Uniper relies on this delivery to meet demands to the commercial and residential customers and they are now currently forced to make up the difference in the gas uh, the spot gas market so they are paying uh, much higher prices and this higher cost uh, will hit the earnings as they redrew the entire full year earning guidance and now they are talking to the government uh, to stabilize the finances basically they are asking for a bailout uh, so they ask increase uh, including increasing uh, credit lines that means the, the ability to take loans to help to you know, manage the current situation so the Uniper is the biggest uh, buyer of the gas is now uh, struggling now and and then we have so only a few days ago so that was in, on the 30th so just a few days ago the union head uh, of the German Federation of Trade Unions uh, Bill Om Sontag I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly uh, sorry it's not this guy he told this guy so this guy is actually the the the, the head is actually Yasmin uh, Fahimi yeah, no wonder just now I I don't recognize this name so uh, Yasmin Fahimi he, he said that the entire industry in Germany could collapse could uh, not absolutely could collapse uh, due to the natural gas supply cut from Russia so he's one of the top union official so I quote him entire industries are in danger of collapsing permanently uh, because of the gas bottlenecks so aluminium glass chemical industries such a collapse would have massive consequences for the entire economy and the jobs in Germany so he's so he said that this collapse is not just going to be temporary it's going to be permanent uh, this this article is uh, written on the businessinsider.com so um, so in Germany the there is this collective uh, panic uh, it seems uh, as a result of this uh, gas uh, situation and uh, this is likely going to have a uh, major geopolitical consequences because there's only so much pressure a country can take before they will start to you know go the other way and and this this also you know situation also is panicking france because uh france is now preparing to reopen the coal fire power plant as a contingency so according to a written uh, statement uh which confirms a report uh recently the energy minister or the energy ministry said that the french government could reopen a coal fire power plant uh, in the lorraine region so lorraine region is around here and uh to so for in the northeastern france this winter so this is a precautionary measure uh given the situation in ukraine so they they are reserving the option to actually re reactivate this plant uh if they really need it but it, but currently it's not reopened yet but they are now preparing just in case they need it because uh, they are having problems with their nuclear power plants uh, so so they are now you know, taking some contingency uh, so however they also added that this will not affect plans that to phase out uh, coal plants in front because they are still on this you know green thing right where they want to you know go to the renewables and uh, reduce the, the usage of dirty energy so they'll continue to do and uh, electric production from coal will remain below one percent so this is from big news network and on similar news uh, or, or related news algeria has has reached deal to hike gas price so uh algeria re reported that uh this is from finance yahoo uh they said that the they have reached a deal with three partners they did not name who are the partners to increase price i think one of the partners is likely to be france so they they are increasing their gas uh, natural gas price uh and uh they are currently still trying to you know review prices with other partners and uh, this uh, chief executive officer of Sona Truck told reporters on Sunday they did not name the three counterparties which the deal was uh, has uh, which deal already been struck. So that means that they only struck deal with three partners and they are still trying to you know talk to the, all the other partners. 
So he said the negotiation negotiations are hard and very tiring and requires more time. So Sonatrach is looking to uh, benefit more from a surge in gas price in the past year, and they are milling uh, several options with buyers, uh, including linking its contract more to spot gas prices. So uh, gas contracts are often tied to crude oil prices. So this uh, Sonatrach is the state energy firm of uh, Algeria. So in case you don't know where it's Algeria, this is Algeria, uh, this very big piece of the Sahara. This is Algeria. So uh, they they produ they actually supply gas, I think, to France and, pro and and probably to Spain as well. I I can't I offhand I just cannot remember. So uh, this is happening. So the gas price is you no know, the high gas price is actually you know, giving a lot of countries a lot of benefit to uh earn more money. And this is not forgotten by the workers in uh, in, Nor in Norway. The oil and gas workers in in the Norwegian uh, offshore uh, rigs has decided to put on a strike, and they are they are now cutting output, both oil and gas. So this is a uh, in this uh, union led uh, industrial action. So the workers are demanding wage hike to compensate for rising inflation. So uh, so Norway. And this because they are seeing you know the high oil and gas price, and uh, especially with the supplies to natural gas are uh, especially tight uh, due to the Russian export cut. So they are the workers are taking advantage of the current geopolitical situation, and they wanted to have a pay rise because of also inflation because the inflation is now uh, wrecking havoc all across the world, and the workers feel that you know since our company is earning so much money, uh, they should have a piece of it. So currently. Uh, they have initiated a shutdown of three fields in the North Sea as a result of the strike. And the uh, Norwegian Labour Ministry uh, is following the conflict closely and they might intervene uh, to stop the strike if there are exceptional circumstances. So I wonder what, what is exceptional, what circumstances mean. So the strike is going to escalate. Uh, they are still planning to increase uh, more cuts. So the thing is the gas, oil and gas workers are not totally stop working they are still working but they are cutting the supply but by saturday they if they still don't get what they want they're going to close up to a quarter of norway's gas output as well as 15 percent of its oil production according to reuters uh calculation so uh this is a bit serious uh given europe is probably very dependent on uh, norway uh now for supplies so let's see what's going to happen uh, next and not just Norway workers are you know, making people panic. Russia itself is also making people panic all the way on their eastern side of their border. So uh, according to a Kremlin statement, uh, basically Putin, uh, they have now demanded the rights uh, to the entire offshore facility here at Sahalin. So, they they say that the russian first liquefied natural gas plant will be transferred to a new russian company within 30 days so the stakeholders who do not take a stake in the new company may not be fully compensated so they are playing this game like okay this is an entirely new company previously they already have a, com a company a co combined project right so now they just form a new company and say okay now you have to buy a stake into this new company or maybe join and uh, if you do not join, then you will lose all your money that you invested in this Sahalin project, Sahalin 2 project. So Shell is holding a 27.5% stake in the facility currently in, in this Sahal, Sahalin 2 project. And uh, the majority of this gas produced at Sahalin 2 will supply Japan. And uh, trading house Mitsui and uh, Mitsubishi owns a combined 22.5%. So 22.5 plus 27.5, they actually uh, constitute, um, I think, 49%. So they actually own almost half of this project. And But because they are now following sanctions against Russia, these companies are not going to be able to you know, take a stake in this new company. And if they do not take a stake in this new company, they're going to lose all this stake that they have. And uh, this is the latest move from Russia to attempt to push out all these foreign stakeholders. And in a way to force them into a, uh, 
force them into doing something that is against uh their their words. You know, they have been saying about sanctions. You got to like do all this uh this chest bump uh chest dumping things. Uh, so now Russia is going to test their resolve, and uh, Japan is uh definitely panicking, uh because Japan is uh they do not produce energy and they are very dependent on imports. So the Japanese uh spokesman uh. Seiji Kihara uh, said on the 1st of July, uh, 1st of July, say that uh, the Tokyo is currently, uh, the, the Japanese government is closely examining the impact of the LNG, the liquefied uh, natural gas import. So generally speaking, he said that uh, they believe their, their resource interests must not be undermined. And then uh, he declined to f give further comment probably to what this is supposed to mean. And which means that uh, they will probably rethink uh, their position. And uh, the Prime Minister Fukio Kishida, he said that the government did not think the decree, the decree will immediately stop uh, LNG imports on which the Japan is heavily dependent. Uh, we think we need to carefully monitor how the decree will affect our contract. So the decree referring to uh, Putin's plan to force uh, all these foreign companies to you know, buy into this new company. And uh, basically, basically, it's a nationalization of the Sahalin too. So, so they are now currently you know, reviewing what's the situation. And uh, meanwhile, they also look into alternative suppliers, which is going to be one hell of a difficult because the whole of Europe is now looking for alternative suppliers. Uh, so it's going to be uh, a big, massive headache for Japan. And uh, their import fee is going to be much more expensive uh, because while Brunei, Indonesia, they do produce uh, petrol and gas, I, I don't think their petrol and gas production is that high. And uh, they will still look to Middle East. But Middle East is now very full with contracts uh, because of Europe. And it's much nearer for Europe. It's much, much more further for Japan. Getting from the Americans, uh, the, it's gonna, not going to be very efficient uh, because the Americans uh, is led by Biden now. Uh, so, you know, Biden do Biden things. Over at, however, things are all not well. It does seems like as if the Russians are you no know, are having things in control, but it's not exactly that's the case, because Gazprom for the first time decided not to issue dividends since nineteen ninety eight. Immediately, their shares dropped by thirty percent. Thirty percent is a lot. Imagine your income dropping thirty percent. Uh, that that will be one hell of a like a scary right. So. Um, according to the statement, the company is not paying for the first time in 1998. The shareholders have decided that in the current situation, it's not advisable to pay dividends uh, for 2021. Uh, this is according to Farmil Sadigov, the deputy chairman of the Gazprom Management Committee, and then uh, according to a post on their official Telegram channel. So Gazpro uh, Gazprom... Uh, the government of the Russia is actually the biggest shareholder with a 38% in the state of Gazprom. And uh, basically, the shareholders probably refer to Putin. And um, the company ironically reported all-time high profits in 2021 due to soaring energy prices uh, on a demand recovery as a pandemic recession eased. So this is very scary because they had the all-time all high profit, but they, now they decided not to issue dividends. So, which means the situation I guess from is not exactly good, probably very bad. So, currently, gas from's priorities is the implementation of investment programs, including gasification of the regions of the Russian Federation, and preparation for the coming winter. And I believe this is what he means is that they are trying, they are, they need the additional capital to start building new pipelines, uh, going. Probably, probably through Kazakhstan, Mongolia, you know, into China, you know, all this kind of thing. Or maybe, you know, see how they can actually stretch all the way to India. So, uh, reaching India will be a big, big problem. It's going to be difficult uh, because the, the situation here in Afghanistan is crazy. And uh, Uzbekistan is destabilized. Kazakhstan is not exactly stable. Uh, so, a lot of uh, problems in Central Asia. And uh, Lavrov is currently in Mongolia. He just landed uh, with a red carpet uh, welcoming him in Mongolia. So maybe they're going to do something in, uh, through Mongolia to China. I'm not sure. 
anyway um next go to the next piece of uh, news which is uh ukraine so you ukraine uh say say on the same day uh that they're gonna help to export power to europe so they say that uh they can supply to europe and they already exported 100 megawatts of power to romania and they have the potential to send up to 2.5 gigawatts to europe in total so they say that uh under this scenario ukraine will be able to receive more than 70 70 billion ukraine have uh harvinia 2.3 billion us dollars per year which is actually very good money so uh the i think this is the minister uh said that uh small amounts of electricity could also begin to flow to slovakia and hungary in early july so we are already in early july so let's see how this goes so uh ukraine is probably going to use this to you know help to fund whatever shortfall they have uh things are not going well in ukraine and uh the ability to to generate this amount of power probably also through nuclear power i guess um so over on the other side of the atlantic so this um, this is a uh, united states uh for the first time uh us is sending more gas to europe than russia so this is also a reflection of the, the geopolitical situation over at europe so us being a country this far away um, there is no pipeline linking europe to america they are able to supply more natural gas to europe than russia through the pipelines so so the recent steep cuts in natural gas flow to eu means that this is the first month in history that eu has imported more gas via lng from the us than via pipeline from russia this is said by uh, iea exec executive director fatih biro so and then uh but the situation uh in usa is not exactly uh good so because gas prices have been so expensive uh, in USA, uh, thieves are now stealing gas from vehicles. Uh, but gas in USA actually means petrol. Uh, I mean, the rest of the world call it petrol, but they call it gas. So they say that if the vehicle do not have a locking gas cap, uh, it's easy for people with the right equipment to get access uh, for what you may have just paid for by up to 100 US dollars at the pump. So uh, this victim called Carol Carolyn Self, uh, jaw dropped uh, when she, she prepared to go to work and realized uh, her car's gas tank has been emptied and uh, there are videos uh, online of people caught on camera stealing gas from vehicles uh, but it's not a very highly reported crime but it does happen and uh, residents around her neighborhood has also you know reported to be victims and she thought that it's a rare case of bad luck and then one week later she got she got stealed again you know she got robbed again of the gas so i mean in the us uh the the gas price has been uh, become so expensive that people actually steal gas directly from cars so uh that's quite amazing to me and um and and because the gas price is so bad uh even biden go crazy now so he's telling companies running gas station to bring down the price to reflect on the cost that they are paying for the product so i uh, quote my message to the companies running gas stations and setting prices at a pump is simple. This is the time of war and global peril. Bring down the price you are charging at a pump to reflect the cost you are paying for the product and do it now. Amazing. Uh, and uh, Jeff Bezos uh, basically replied, uh, inflation is, far, is uh, far too important a problem for the White House to keep making statements like this. It's either straight ahead misdirection or a deep misunderstanding of basic market dynamics. So uh, he got he got thrown or burned by uh, Jeff Bezos, uh, Biden. And I think this is uh, definitely not going to be doable. And uh, this is also something that uh, the EU is or the EU is trying to do. I think the G7 is trying to do. They want to negotiate. Uh, I, I didn't put in the news here. I think I missed the entire news to put here. Uh, the G7 uh, reportedly want to you know pack a price, uh, a high a max price. You know, I don't know how they're going to do that. I don't think that is a viable thing. And uh, so there was also this incident of a ship from Russia getting uh, intercepted by the U.S. authority uh, on suspicion that the cargo is uh, may violate a federal ban on Russian oil imports. 
So, so the ship was carrying a uh, fuel oil vacuum gasoil, and uh, it's scheduled to dock somewhere uh, in or near New Orleans earlier this week. So vacuum gasoil is a uh, refined into gasoline and diesel. So basically, I think it's a raw raw oil, I think. And uh, the ship was uh, was being checked by the U.S. Customs and Border Protection, and somehow um, they still loaded, they still unloaded, and um. Uh, and but they did track that the this the the ship visited the Russian Taman Peninsula in in the Black Sea that transport products from Russia to and Kazakhstan. So, but the U.S. ban does not include products from Kazakhstan, so they have no idea how to do how to manage this situation. And the ship actually, uh, if from my understanding, unloaded, so arrived at New Orleans. So that's that, and uh. In case uh, the oil price is not bad enough, Libya declared forced merger uh, on oil export. So the Libyan uh, National Oil Corporation declares forced uh, merger, uh, I don't know if this is how, I, how to pronounce it, uh, on crude export uh, from its oil terminals uh, due to blockades of production and ports. And um, this comes after weeks of protests and uh, closures due to you know, politics of who should be governing the country so the libya continues to be a mess and uh they are they are now con totally stop export entirely uh opec uh reported iran actually earned uh, 25 billion dollars in oil sales in 2021 so uh so despite all the sanction and whatnot uh iran actually is earning decent money so they said that uh, OPEC reported uh, there is a 560 billion uh, revenue in the oil sales in the annual report. And um, the revenue of 13 members of OPEC uh, stood at 317 billion. Iran themselves uh, earned more than 25.313 billion in 2021. And uh, this oil sales actually tripled uh, as compared to the year before in 2020. So uh, so happy times at uh, Tehran, uh, in in Iran. So, and so is in Iraq. Iraq is also very happy now because they have announced uh more than eleven billion in oil revenue just for May. So this eleven billion uh in just one month, uh, Tehran only earned twenty five billion in the entire year. So that's the sanctions still you know is uh giving Iran a lot of problem, but so the the Iraqi news agency uh, stated the Ministry of Oil announced total export and revenues achieved for the month of May. Uh, stated the total amount of the export of crude oil reaches 102 million and 203,020 barrels, uh, and the revenue amounted to 11.436 billion. And uh, in fact, uh, the in June, they actually, I think, from my memory, is eleven point five billion uh, in the separate article. So, uh, Iraq is definitely having a windfall now. Uh, hopefully, they will make good use of this money and you know rebuild their country. So that's all from Iraq. Um, so, uh, away from oil, uh, we are now move moving into the food food crisis. So we already passed oil and gas. So in the food crisis issue, on the 24th of June, Ukraine and Moldova plans to restart railway service. So Moldova is uh, this country, uh, this country here, this country here, this just uh, beside Odessa and, uh, be and between Romania and Ukraine. So they decided to you know, restart this railway service uh, here. Uh, in this region here like this and uh, this this will be freight train operations and uh, the train route will be at the Berizino to Basara Beaska railway section so and uh, the Ukraine will construct 23 kilometers of train track while Moldova will construct uh, construct uh, 1.2 kilometers so Moldova intends to export and import commodities through Ukraine's uh, Ismail port on the Dunebe once railway services 
resume. So, so is Moldova actually want to use Ukraine as an import export? Yeah. Um, so hopefully they don't uh, lose Odessa accidentally. Over at uh, US, uh, reports coming out by the USDA National Agricultural Statistics uh, shows that the United States are currently paying 66 percent more for fertilizer this year than last year. So, and uh, fertilizer is now costing 140 percent more than it did 10 years ago. So, the World Bank report says that fertilizer is now in their least affordable level since 2008 global food crisis. So fertilizers has already increased by 30% from the start of the year. So there are some uh, agricultural producers are paying double or triple for fertilizer this year compared to what they paid last year. So things are not looking good in the USA now. And uh, if fertilizer price increase, then we're going to see food price increase as well. And, uh, and this price increase is affecting Peru very badly. So we know where is Peru now. Uh, Peru is here in this mountainous region here in South America. So in Peru, truckers and farmers are, are now going on strikes over fuel and fertilizer costs. So truckers and some farm groups will go on strike on Monday, which is already passed. And uh, after they failed to reach agreement with the government to reduce the impact of steep, steep uh, global oil price and fertilizer price. And uh, other farming unions are also announcing strikes on Monday and uh, due to the increase in price of fertilizer and also due to fertilizer shortage. So the Justice Minister Felix Chero uh, said that the dialogue is still not exhausted and they are still you know, in the permanent sessions of uh, ministers to avoid protests. Uh, government is currently uh, offering subsidies for road tolls and fertilizer costs. So the uh, situation is uh, quite bad. You know? And uh, in Niger, or Niger, uh, I'm not going to pronounce it in the other way that is uh, not very uh, YouTube friendly. So is this African, Central African country, uh, they have managed to increase their harvest by 30% through the use of sanitized human urine as fertilizer. So they actually managed to you know, do something different to deal with their fertilizer shortage. And uh, they started to use f uh, sanitized human urine. And uh, the human urine is uh, approved for use after co consultation with their religious leader and medical experts and they actually enjoyed a 30% increase in harvest so they basically learned this from Asia where they use cow urine fertilizer so so the guy said you no know, why not they don't have cows why not use a uh, human urine so they decided to try it and uh, it seems to be a much more cheaper alternative to you no know, commercial fertilizers uh, in areas that are suffering a uh, severe droughts all the fertilizers are too expensive so now they try it and uh, it works but so good for them Niger so in Brazil uh, they, also, they also managed to deal with their fertilizer situation they managed to imp uh, import more in June uh, the import increased by 18.6% totaling uh, 4.15 4 million tons according to government data and uh, thus quashing the fears of delivery disruption due to trade uh, sanctions on key suppliers. So uh, they have imported about 85% of its fertilizer needs and uh, they should have enough to start planting their summer crops like soybean and first corn starting in September. So according to the analyst with uh, Agri-Invest Commodities, uh, they say that with the import of 4.15 million tons in June and expected reduction in the fertilizer use in the next soy crop, uh, farmers are guaranteed. So, so according to the data compiled by Souza, the this is the highest volume of import for the month of June over the past five years and marked the second consecutive month that they have imported more than 4 million tons. So the Brazilian government uh, is doing a decent job uh, trying to resolve all these uh, fertilizer issues which I have reported previously. So previously they have been negotiating with uh, Russia and I think they have they are trying they have managed to find some ways to increase their fertilizer imports and then are uh, able to uh, resolve this issue so that they have no planting problem. And uh, however not every 
not everywhere is having happy news. In South Sudan, uh, they are now starting to have a food crisis. The reason is because the UN World Food Program uh, has suspended their rationing program in part of the country, in parts of the country due to lack of funding. The body said that it needs uh, 426 million to continue the distributing food. Uh, of course, everybody prefer to give the money to Ukraine nowadays. So they are not getting they are not getting the money to buy food, and the international community community has not been forthcoming. They prefer to focus on other overlapping crises, including the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Like I said, so currently, uh, twenty thousand living in the display, displacement camps were now at is now at risk of starvation, and uh, according to what I have read, uh, there is already a few people died from uh, malnutrition in South Sudan already. And uh, problems continue also in Sri Lanka, where because of the lack of fuel, they decided to extend uh, the school closure for another week. The, so because the teacher and parents cannot get their children to class, so because they have no, there's not enough fuel for them. So they also appealed for the aspects, the Sri Lankan uh, aspects to you know, send money home through banks to finance new oil purchases. And uh, the government had already ordered new fuel stocks and the first ships with 40,000 metric tons of diesel is expected to arrive on Friday. And uh, the first ship to carry gasoline will, will come on July 22nd. So other fuel shipments are in the pipeline, but they're struggling to find 587 million to pay for the fuel. So Sri Lanka currently uh, owe about 800 million to, to seven different fuel suppliers. So uh, Sri Lanka is definitely needing some kind of bailout, uh, but not sure who want to bail them out. So and fin in the final news, uh, Britain is also uh, feeling a little worried and uh, they, they now announced that they will start breeding uh, crops that will grow with minimal water so that okay, they can ensure food security. So this is said by the Environment Secretary, George Ustis. So he said, he said uh, with water scarcity likely to become an increasing issue around the world and the ability to develop plants to cope better with water stress will be vital for global food security. And uh, government officials are planning to speed up the production of uh, gene-edited crops to help uh, guarantee British food supply in the wake of the conflict in Ukraine. And uh, amid the concerns of UK's own food self-sufficiency, uh, they have introduced a bill which will allow the farms to grow more crops by planting variants that has been edited to be more resistant to disease and less water or fertilizer. So uh, Britain is definitely you know, uh, planning to do more to make sure that uh, they will con have continued food crisis. Maybe they believe that uh, this food crisis will last for a very, 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 very long time. So maybe that's why uh, they are thinking ahead. So anyway, this is the update you know, of this uh, energy and food crisis, uh, mainly as a result of the anti-Russian anti sanctions. And uh, hopefully uh, this helps you to you know, link up some of the things that, is, that had happened uh, around the world. Uh, sorry for the missing out of the G7 news. So, and uh, so that's it. And I'll see you in the next update.